happy birthday. Happy one year belated potiversary, everybody. Make a wish. I hope you made a wish. Welcome, welcome I, to my new and returning viewers. Thank you so much for checking me out if you knew. And as always, thank you so much for coming back again. If you not, I will explain why I was on a little three-week hiatus. But thank you so much for coming back. I know it is, um, I'm like almost two weeks in saying happy potiversary. So I thought I'd do it now. I didn't have a cake. I only had a little Debbie cookie. So it's the thought that counts. All right. Anyways, how is everybody? I hope you are good. I hope so. We'll jump into it. We got knitting going on. I got a little of this, a little of that. Not working on a whole lot, but we'll jump into it. All right. Reason why I was on a hiatus. Let's see. Last weekend would have been the, th the week of the 13th. I... Actually, the week before, I started with such pain in my... I have tennis elbow, and I started with such pain here, and it went down into my carpal tunnel. So far, I'd say the last two weeks, I honestly have not done really any knitting or crocheting because it has been absolutely painful and hard. I mean, I would wake up, my hand was so... It would hurt, it was swollen, my elbow was swollen and painful... My hand, my first four fingers would just go numb even out of the clear blue. I had, I wore a splint and an L and a splint on my elbow. So I knew enough, no knitting or crocheting. So since I didn't do anything, I was like, I didn't think it would be fair to you guys to record a podcast with no work I've done. I mean... If you guys are okay with, if I have times where my tennis elbow or my carpal tunnel lacks up that I can't knit or crochet, like during that week, if you guys are okay with me making a video like that, where actually I didn't do no work but just have works in progress, if you'd like me to do a video, I'll continue making videos even if I didn't work on anything new. Um, let's catch up. On Saturday, September 6th. I stated that I was going to the Endless Mountain Fiber Festival. No, I'm sorry, on the 7th. It would have been on a Sunday. I said I was going to the Endless Mountain Fiber Festival. I didn't get there. Wonk, wonk. I left here early in the morning around like 8.30, quarter to 9. Got, I'd say it was like at least a good two hours or an hour away from it yet. And my tire blew. I had to wait about 20 minutes for roadside service, which was wonderful. I'm going to give Geico a little prop here. The customer service was wonderful, made sure I was safe, told me the tow truck I would call me before they left. I said with 10 minutes getting off the phone with them, the tow truck guy called me and said, I'm on my way. It's going to take about 20 minutes, give or take because of construction. They were working on a Sunday. I said, okay. I'd say it was maybe about 15 minutes. It really wasn't 20 minutes, and he was there. Said, my tire blew. Here it wore down to the metal curtains on the tire. And wouldn't you know my luck, my donut on my car was flat. Taught me a lesson. Check my donut. And this comes a little too late because I love watching the domestic CEO. And I caught her podcast too late where she <laughs> said for road, for road trip tips to check a donut or uh, any any tie, like any type of spare tire to check it. I now since learned that. But the tow truck guy was wonderful. He followed me two miles up the road. He said I could drive on the donut but go like 40 miles an hour in a 70. So I put my flashers on and I felt like, in, I don't know, like one of those people like, that like to drive slow looking around, put my four ways on. He followed me two miles up up the road highway to the next exit. 
and he said if they don't have an air compressor, there's a gas station two, mo two miles up the road. At another exit, he said, I'll follow you up there. Followed me to the first gas station two miles up the road. They had an air compressor. And he, the, the tow truck guy comes to me and he says, oh, by the way, I didn't know it. He said, but they sell tires. Maybe by chance they'll have a tire for you. If they don't, he said, there's, I think it was like 50, 60 miles away. He said, there's a Sears auto center that's open to 8 and a Firestone that's open to like 5 o'clock. I said, thank you very much. I mean, guy was great. Reason he couldn't fill my donut is he didn't bring out a wrecker when he came to change my tire. He brought out a little pickup truck. He said, I bought my pickup truck. Because they said, you just needed your tire changed. I said, well, had I known my, my donut was flat, I would have told you so you can bring the wrecker. Lesson learned. But anyways, this gas station, really, really, really great. I filled my tire up with air. Guy came out and said, I have a tire for you. Sorry, I heard my gram getting up and I going outside and I wanted to make sure she got out okay anyways I was saying that the tow truck place truck tow truck the gas station that the tow truck guy took me to was they were excellent my friend went with me and he goes well I was feeling the tire he said let me check and the people that were working there's a family-owned gas station the owner comes out he says you're lucky day I have a tire to fit your car he said, it, he said, tire $65 plus tax, mount, and balancing. I said, okay. Put it on. I said, but please check my other three tires. I said, if they need to be replaced, let me know. And I'll go right up to Sears and get them taken care of. I'd say within 50, 10 15 minutes he had my new tire on for the new tire mountain balancing and Pennsylvania charges a tire tax it came to $96 and 49 cents which I didn't think was too bad for a little mom almost like a little mom and pop gas station they were wonderful Monday I called my insurance company and I said to them how wonderful that both the tow truck guy was and how wonderful that the gas station was that he sent me to. In fact, I sent both of them a little thank you note. I mean, I thank you. And no, you know, appreciation goes a long way. All right, so that was that. Moving on to the week of the 8th. Nothing exciting. I didn't do anything exciting. I know you can't tell except the only week last week is I got my hair cut and <laughs> styled. But not that you can tell I got it up today. Um, I didn't do no knitting or crocheting last week as I said because my tennis elbow and carpal tunnel were acting up. This week I was able to start <coughs> excuse me, knitting and crocheting again. Not a whole lot. I take it I take it a little bit at a time I'd say by last Saturday I was able to start or later that week I was able to start crocheting a little bit maybe a row or two at a time and then that was it I just ease myself into it no pr I'm like no pressure Nicole just don't overdo it yesterday I went to a lecture. Well, not a lecture. I more or less kind of helped a friend of mine. He does lectures on if you have children and you're sensitive to your children hearing this word, cover your ears now. It's not really a bad word, but the title of the lecture is called, Are You Ready? I'm going to say it in one, two, three, four, five. What the hell is this used for? Okay, you can uncover their ears now. So it was an array of antiques starting from like 
1800s all the way up until... Excuse me. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. Up until World War II, um, a huge array of antiques. And I, some of them I knew because I went with him to a lecture back in March. So I learned he's very knowledgeable when it comes to antiques and things like that. So I I soak up all the information I'm like a sponge. I soak up all the information he tells me and I'm able to remember. So while he was talking to people about different things, people were coming up and looking. They're like, excuse me, do you know what this rattle looking thing is? I said, well, yes, I do. I asked him at first, I said, well, what do you think it is? What do you think it was used for? Uh, a fancy looking rattle you put on the shelf? I said, believe it or not, I said, if you've watched things like Downton Abbey, you've seen it. I said, it's actually called a knife rest. Oh, I would have thought it was a fancy rattle. I mean, people, I, I was just glad that I could help. There was like a good 40 people that showed up. So I was glad. That's what I did yesterday. Today so far, I just went out, didn't do anything exciting. My Nana and I just went out, enjoyed it being nice out. Um, we went. I took her, she wanted to go up to cemetery and check to make sure everything was okay and put fall flowers up. So I did that and now I'm here with you guys. Um, like I said, yeah, that's basically why I've been absent this week past couple weeks um yeah let's get into the crocheting i have something but i cannot show you guys because it's a i'm testing something all i'm gonna show you and i can because i'm not giving nothing away is this that's all you're gonna see from it and you can just keep guessing from there. Not saying a word. I like to tease you guys at times. And I am. Next. This did not get any love for a couple weeks. Mostly because I'm working on the test project in my hand. It is. And I, I was gifted. And I'm a wonderful person gifted me this pattern called the Hitchhiker. By Martina Baim. And I know you can't really see it too well. It's in black and white. But it's called the Hitchhiker right there in case you're wondering if it's blending in. I was graciously gifted that for my birthday. And the person knows who she is. And thank you so much. And again, it has no love from the last time you guys have seen it. This is how far I am on it. Again, nothing, nothing you didn't see a couple weeks ago. And if this is the first time seeing it, well, then you're seeing it. Very fun pattern, very easy. I do have to look at the, I do have to look at the directions for it. Just so that I can keep track of what row I'm on and making sure I'm doing it right till I get it down pat. 100%. This is what it looks like color wise. The yarn I am using is Red Heart, Heart and Soul. It's a sock yarn and the color is called Green Envy. I don't know why they call it Green Envy <laughs> because it isn't all greens as you can see. So I do don't know how they came up with the name Green Envy. I will show you a skein of it. It is called Green Envy. Here, here is the information. And here is what it looks like worked up into socks. I don't know why they call it Green Envy. But they call it that. I don't come up with the names, people. But I wouldn't have gone with Green Envy. And it's being kept in my I Love Cupcakes bag because I love sweets. Um, 
my afternoon tea shawl has got zero nort love. However, is it handy to show you guys? No, I don't have it handy to show you guys. Um, tell you, I'll tell you what else I'm working on. As I said, because I haven't been really working on anything. I am my afternoon tea shawl. I haven't given it any love. However, there is a project that I have been working on off and on. And it's my sweater. It is. Let me get it out here. Called Iced. And that is by Carol Feller. You guys, I've mentioned before, if you knew, this is first time here. I mentioned I wanted to cast it back on because I frogged it last year. I am using Lion Brand Homespun. I, I bought a sweater's worth of that yarn thinking that it will be great for this sweater. However, I have since rethought that. But I'm not about to frog the sweater again. I frogged it the first time because I picked up the wrong skein of yarn. And I ran out of it and the two colors do not match. Did I do a gate swatch? Yes. However, when I got to the last repeat, I didn't have the right number. I didn't have enough number of stitches on there that I should have. So, um, repeating it till I get the right number instead of ripping out. And it don't look like much yet, but here's what it looks like so far. It's a raglan top down. I don't remember the colorway of this homespun. It is a blue. I'm calling it iced because that's what it looks like. It is blue. Um, I don't know. I think maybe my gauge. Am I even showing you guys the right side? Yes, I am. I'm thinking my gauge because when my hand, my arm started hurting, my knitting got lo a little loosey-goosey. And then once it started feeling better, it got tighter. So you can kind of see the difference right in here. I don't know if I want to rip it out or leave it that way. I'm kind of leaning towards frogging it and redoing it because it is noticeable. You can notice it. It's not supposed to do that. So I think I'm just going to frog it and restart it because honestly that will bother me. Once the sweater's done, that will bother me. Be like, I know it's there. I see it, and you see it, so we see it. So that is that. And, oh, I'm sorry. It is like 3.25 in the afternoon. I do not know why I'm yawning. I was also recently graciously gifted another pattern by a very lovely person. I will not mention who. But they know who that she knows who she is. And I am excited about it. I cannot wait to make them up. Make more of them up. But I was graciously gifted the birdie bundle. And the birdie bun bundle. If you guys remember my Barry the Cardinal. It's a little Barry bundle. And I am so excited because I can make Barry friends now. I have often wondered, I have skeins of yarn, but they're not enough to make a sweater because they're different color yarns that necessarily wouldn't mat mesh well to make a sweater. And there's not enough of them. I maybe bought enough to make a throw blanket, you know, like different colors together to make that would make a nice blanket. But I necessarily won't wear them as a sweater. So my problem solved as to what I'm going to do with those. 
because I can make a multitude of multicolored batteries. They can be any color. And I am so excited. So thank you very much for gifting me that. As I said, that is all my knitting and my crocheting I have done. I'm sorry, this podcast is probably going to be on the short side. I am going... Oh, I want to show you guys before I forget. Let me take this cookie off the plate. I went to what they call like the farmer's market or like antiquing and yard sailing. I came across this cute little cup. I thought of Kay from the from the Bakery Bears. And I thought of Molly from Homespun when I saw this. But I picked up this cute little cup. It was just a little single cup all by its itsy bits. Here's what the cup looks like. Very gorgeous. Not a chip. It said it was made in Japan. So I'm thinking this has to be after World War II maybe. It's the feel doesn't feel like it's new new. Or maybe pre Japan pre war. And here is the saucer. It has a marking on the back, but it has since wore off over the years. But here's what the saucer looks like. Isn't it gorgeous? And here's the back again. It has the same stamp. And... There's whatever was there that came off. I don't know what it was. I paid, and I'm not afraid to admit it. I only paid for this cute little cup and saucer set $1.50. I thought it was worth it. I looked at it, and I said, I'm going to give you a good home. I'm not. This really isn't going to go with my cup and saucer sets that I collect, collect, that are collectors. This is just my... I'm going to have a cup of tea out of it, saucer. So that's what I used that for. I had to show you guys. It's just gorgeous. Next. I actually, when I was out, I don't normally talk too much about, like, my nail polishes and all. But for you ladies and maybe some guys that watch me that paint your nails... I saw Sally Hansen has this stuff called Miracle Gel. No light needed. Up to 14 days of color and shine. You may have seen this out in the stores. I'm not sure. But I seen it and I kind of like gel polish. However, I don't like the process you have to go through where when you're ready to change the color, you got to put nail polish with acetone in it and a cotton ball and tin foil over your nails and let it on for like 10 to 15 minutes then take it off and kind of scrape it and then go through the whole process of a base coat under the LED light then the polish color under the LED light then maybe another layer of polish under the LED light and the top coat under the LED light then you clean it up with some rubbing alcohol and then rub it with cuticle oil. It dries your nails out. If you've ever had it done more than once, you know what I'm talking about. So I saw this and I figured I'd give it a go, Joe. And this this is what it looks like. And the if you're wondering why it's torn... I seen a tutorial, product re other product reviews on it, and I've seen it from Sally Hansen. The lid had a two dollar off coupon. This kit, it's not cheap. It is it cost me like fifteen bucks at Walmart. No, Kmart. Kmart and Walmart are the same price. It's fourteen ninety nine for the kit. The polish itself is seven ninety nine. So I bought these together, and I said to the woman at Kmart, I said, can I use the $2 off coupon, or do I got to use it on next order? 
She's like, no, you can use it on this. So I got $2 off. This is called Pretty Piggy. That's what I have on my nails, Pretty Piggy. It comes with that, and it comes with the gel activator. It says no base coat needed, so I followed the directions. And this color is called Birthday Suit. I think it's cute. I have a polish similar to this called Skinny Latte. But I wanted to share it with you that you like your nail polishes and you like doing your nails. This is pretty good. I've heard mixed reviews of it. But I painted my nails on Friday night. And they are still good so far. Knock on wood, no chipping. So it says wear up to 14 days. It doesn't say it will wear to 14 days. And I've put it through the test so far. And I'm pretty happy with it, so maybe this is the answer. I don't know if the gel activator works with regular polishes. I couldn't tell you, but I wanted to pass that on to any any of you gents that paint your nails or any of you ladies that paint your nails that like little tidbits to share. I just thought I'd share it in this podcast quick. Um, <laughs> excuse me. One last thing. I'm going to share that I'm going to let you guys go. I am extremely sorry that there's not as much knitting and crochet content in here as there normally is. The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is I know some of I've been talking to some of you as some of you know, you know I I am extremely happy that I found a job that I I love and it's going wonderful. But I know some of a bunch of us were talking about like what we could do to supplement, I don't want to say, would it be supplement or help add to our incomes? And I know some stay-at-home moms are like, you know, I feel bad, you know, I'm not contributing like I used to. Well, I was looking in Good Housekeeping. I think it was the September issue or maybe the October issue. Maybe the October because I think it had pumpkins on it. I'm not sure, but it's September or October. And they had on there ways to earn extra money. So if you're looking for ways to earn extra money for yourself or to contribute towards your household, I know holidays are coming up and people want some extra money to spend. I found some and one, this one website, no, I'm sorry, there's two websites here. If you're interested in testing websites like to make sure that they can't be, like, you can't break them or you can't harm them or they're easy on the eyes and easy to use, user-friendly, that we like them. To test websites, and this says you can make 10 to $15 per test, and it's called usertesting.com, one word, U-S-E-R-T-E-S-T-I-N-G.com. And the other one, UI, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember my own writing there, Y-O-U-E-Y-E dot com. And it says you can make 10 to $15 per test. Here is what it, here's, if you can't read my writing, let me know. I will post a link, but I wanted to share that with you guys. And the next one, it says you can make between a dollar to fifty dollars, and that's to fill out online surveys. One is called Darwin's D A R W I N S Data D A T A, all one word. dot com, and the other one is called. And my girlfriend uses this, and it's actually true. You do make money on this. It's called pinecone.com. P-I-N-E-C-O-N-E.com. And you can go to those sites, Rochester, sign up. My, I, As I said, I know my one girlfriend, my friend, my best friend, one of my be best friends uses pinecone and... She does make money. And it's just a tip because I know I was talking to some of you and 
you were, were like, you know, what can we do to supplement your income? You can't trust these work, a lot of these work from home, set their rip off. So it's an idea. I will actually, on my, on our RAV page, I'll open up a thread for you guys if you're interested. And you can go check it out. I mean, as I said, I know holidays are coming up. And I know we all love extra money for our stash. <laughs> and goodies for our, our knitting and crocheting. So I thought I'd share those with you guys. I am going to let you guys go so that I can edit this. And I can get supper prep to be started soon. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.